With the entire world currently in lockdown and all of us forced to stay at home, ignoring our diets, skipping showers for the fourth day in a row and sitting down for extended periods of time, staring at the same faces, day in, day out, never being able to truly get some alone time, it's only a matter of time before issues start to arise and minor annoyances turn into full-on problems. Of course these problems haven't changed, but your ability to tolerate them has. If we're being honest here as lads, quarantine or not, they are still a bit of a pain in the hole. Not leaving you sit down for more than five minutes without irritating you, bleeding all over the place and quite frankly, just downright embarrassing. Embarrassing. But at least before the lockdown, you could go to your doctor and get some cream for them, even if it was kind of awkward to apply it. Uh, wait, what? Hold on a second. Lads, you're not going to believe this. It's after happening again. I'm after mixing up the scripts. This is actually a script for living with hemorrhoids. I don't know why this keeps happening. If there's anything I've learned over the years about how to best maintain a relationship, it's don't spend every waking minute with each other. That's a surefire way to really start getting under each other's skin. I know, I know. I spend every day with my partner and we're fine. No, that just means you're the clingy one and you don't realise that you're on the verge of being punted down the stairs. But speaking as a bloke about women, it's not just the proximity that wears on us like a swift kick to the gooch wears a hymen, but it's your pesky female quirks. Those things you do on a daily basis that are easily brushed away under normal circumstances, but in a lockdown down, become as painful as catching your fly in your sack. I suppose you wouldn't really know what that feels like, but still. We'll start with the biggest and most obvious one. Cleaning. I don't know what goes on in my missus' head, but as soon as the lockdown hit, the cleaning dial in her head got cranked all the way up to 11. And she went from, I'm going to give the kitchen a quick tidy today, to, well don't just stand there, give me a hand. I want to sweep under the carpet. It is getting ridiculous. I'd walk into a room and find her pulling up the floorboards so she can clean the underside of them. But if I dare have the audacity to ask a question, something like, what are you doing? She treats me with a level of disgust that I've never seen before. Like I am the dirtiest bastard who ever did walk on this planet. How could I live in this house knowing such filth exists? Suddenly it's not a house I've been living in, but some sort of rundown shanty in the heart of impoverished Africa. Now, it's at times like this lads, you might want to be nice and perhaps offer to give her a hand cleaning. But let me give you some advice man to man. That is the worst thing you can do. When you clean, always make sure that you do it when and only when she's not around. Otherwise you'll discover some things that you never thought was possible. For instance, did you know something as simple as mopping a floor can be done wrong. You might think, just some cleaning shite, hot water, wet mop, wipe the floor, job done. No, nope. apparently I f***ed that up each and every time. And most of the time it's for completely unreasonable reasons too. Mind yourself there love, I just mopped the floor in there. Did you mop under the washing machine? But, no, I didn't sweep the ceiling either, is that a problem? Ugh, if you're not going to do it right then don't bother. I swear, I have as much patience left for her cleaning as I do nerve endings in my nose from when she mops and thinks a single cup of hot water is the perfect amount to dilute an entire bucket of bleach. But if there's one thing my Mrs. Loves more than cleaning, Disney and me, it is talking. I'm telling you, this woman could talk the sack off Santa himself. It's non-stop work stories, who's getting married, and her minute to minute schedule for the next 25 years. But now because the world is slowly swirling down the toilet, and all of us locked away because holy fook decided to do his best Ozzy Osbourne impression, she's running out of things to talk about and people to talk to. Now to any normal sane person who's running out of things to say and people to say it too, this would spell time to maybe perhaps cut back on the chit chat. Ration the interest in chat, make it stretch that little bit longer. We're running low on lube, pass me the fairy liquid kind of thing. But I think she's just not used to having so much free time with so few people to talk to. So she's decided that I'm her new outlet for chat. Lucky me. Of course most of you know I'm perfectly capable of keeping myself entertained for days and weeks on end. I need very little human interaction. Quite frankly a lot of the time it can ruin my day. But she definitely struggles. I'd be at my PC working on a video, playing a game or watching something whatever and I'd hear her pottering around the house aimlessly like a lost soul until she eventually creeps into my room, sits next to me and just watches me. She just sits there in silence, staring at me like a dog watching me eat, until I address her. I know what she wants, she wants to talk, she's getting the itch and she needs her fix. So as I'm not a complete tool, I'll indulge her for a bit and let her get it out of her system. Of course, being the stereotypical bloke that I am, I don't listen to what she be saying most of the time when she's not her on. As I explained in my last video, if I did listen to every single thing she said, I'd start to forget pin codes. Men's brains just aren't designed like that. Men have great short term memory, yeah, but terrible long term memory. This is why important businessmen always have sex 
trees. They don't want to shag him, they just need him to remember shit. We need women to retain this information on our behalf over long periods of time. In a relationship, women are in charge of retaining all the important information, such as what time the dinner reservation's at, the birthdays of everyone both of you know, and what you said that one time seven years ago when you hurt her feelings, how you said it, what you really meant by it, what shirt you were wearing, the exact length of your hair at the time, and whose arse you glanced at the week leading up to it. Of course, there has to be give and take in a relationship, otherwise it just wouldn't be fair. You don't want one person doing everything. So men obviously have their own place in a relationship with our short-term memories. We in a relationship are solely responsible for explaining what just happened in a movie we are both currently watching. You see, men and women have their own responsibilities in a relationship. This is why gay relationships don't really work. It's either two very punctual people waking up in the morning to remind each other of all the mistakes they've made, or two people who've died in a couch from malnutrition, leaving nothing in their will but a fantastic movie collection. Another bit of advice about relationships I'd like to share, he says acting like his relationship is perfect while currently doing a video complaining about his relationship, is just because you're in a relationship, that's not a free pass to let yourself go. This goes for fellas too, I see it all the time. Two reasonably attractive people will get together, and then two years later you'll see him wandering through Tesco, her in tattered pyjamas covering up a body that's got more folds than an origami swan, with him lumbering alongside wearing splotchy sweatpants and sporting the kind of puby beard that wouldn't be allowed near a playground, both of them looking depressed beyond tablets. Why wouldn't they be? The person they have to diddle for the rest of their life looks like Jab at a hut. I don't know how people do it. The logistics alone of doing the huckle buck without having an attraction to somebody it boggles the mind. Be like trying to stuff a pool noodle through a letterbox that's as dry as Gandhi's flip-flop. Now, I don't necessarily have this problem with Connie. She does actually look after herself. She eats right, she exercises nearly every day, and she's already a good-looking girl to begin with. On her best day, she'd give a horn to a snowman. So needless to say, there was a certain part of my anatomy that was actually looking forward to being locked at home with her all day, every day, if you know what I mean. I was picturing day after day being greeted by her with her makeup done to the nines, some saucy underwear, and a cheeky pair of they're staying on heels for good measure. Say what you want, but as an entertainer, I appreciate a show being put on for me. Now, let me tell you how many times over the last month she's looked so damn doable you could actually hear me become erect. None. Not. Once. Why? Well, it's probably my fault for finding her Disney-themed pyjamas as sexy as the eight-year-olds who normally wear them. Genuinely, she's been rotating the same 15 pairs of pyjamas the last few weeks non-stop. And allow me to speak on behalf of all men here, ladies, when I tell you, pyjamas do absolutely nothing for your looks. Unless you're asking a furry, there is nothing about thick, loose-fitting, fluffy clothes that inspires so much as a shallow sigh out of our man sausage. And seeing her for the 30th day in a row, makeupless, hair a mess, walking around the house in children's clothes like the f***ing anti-horn, starts to wear on a man's pride for you. Now, I know what some of you are going to say. You said she was attractive anyway. You should think that regardless. It shouldn't matter what she's wearing or how she looks in any given day. But you are just wrong. It does matter. Put it this way. Connie looking her absolute best is a five star gourmet meal experience at a Michelin star restaurant. Connie thrown on the couch in pyjamas is eating a takeaway kebab from your local chip shop. Now, I like me that kebab. But if I had to do a review on that kebab, I wouldn't use the words that you'd use for special special occasions, such as succulent, full-bodied, divine. Because not only would you know immediately that I'm talking out my arse, but those kind of statements would cheapen the event of the spectacular gourmet feast that is the missus at her best. Now I'm not saying I look my best right now either. I have stupidly thick hair that hasn't been cut in months so my head looks twice the size and I keep getting stuck in doorways. But at least when I get up in the morning I'm willing to expend the apparent huge quantity of energy that is required to put on normal clothes. Oh, maybe she's just getting complacent. We're together seven years so it is possible she's getting a bit too comfortable for my liking. I'm going to have to light a fire under her now. I'm going to have to get myself some more thirsty fangirls to put the pressure on, I think. Sorry, I can't talk now. Big bouncy fun bag 037 on Twitter says she's got something to show me. <laughs> Oh, don't feel bad for her. She's a right cunt too, I can assure you. Which transitions me lovely into my last complaint. You know when couples have been together for a while and they develop cutesy little things that they do to annoy each other with? Like tickling, poking each other, looking for 15 kisses in a row, hugs that go on way too long. You know, stuff that's mildly annoying, but you know they kinda like it or they can see the funny side to it. For me, and I'm sure most men, it's slapping her arse to see how much of a handprint I can leave on it. It obviously stings, but she likes it, or at the very least, she's never asked me to stop. Now her little cutesy thing, if you can call it that, doesn't fall into any of these categories. It isn't mildly annoying, it's really f***ing annoying. It isn't funny, at least not for me, and I have asked her to stop doing it repeatedly. Her adorable little quirk is, when we're standing in close proximity to each other, and I'm lost in thought, is to quickly and brutally flick her arm out as if it was a whip, and backhand me directly into the plums. And I'm telling you lads, she has the aim of a veteran 
marksman. She hits her mark every single time. Sometimes she does come close to missing, but at the last possible second, extends her fingers and just manages to connect to the underside of them with her fingertips, causing them to do a little bounce like pinballs, which I think is worse. It's like the sack equivalent of a concussion. I'm just left standing there for the five delayed seconds it takes for the pain to kick in, praying to the testicle gods that he let this one slide before the unmistakable pain kicks in. Pain that feels like those cramps you get seconds before explosive diarrhea, combined with a little bit of that pain you feel when you slip out mid-thrust and bounce your knob against her pelvis, causing it to bend in a way that you could only replicate if you attempted to stab somebody with a fishing rod. The kind of pain that has you bent over against the wall, completely immobilised, and all you can do is try not to get sick. This was a rare occurrence before, but now that we're stuck at home together, it happens all the time. It's getting to the point where I'm starting to flinch when she moves suddenly. She sneezed the other day and I threw my phone across the room. That's how bad it's getting. Now, I know what you're all thinking. This is plain and clear domestic abuse, and I really should report it to the authorities. Clearly she's been looking at me every day, sitting on the couch, playing with them, and jealousy is starting to get the better of her. Like the spoiled pyjama child that she is, she wants to break my ties because she doesn't have any of her own. She won't be happy until she does break them and I have to become one of them new fangled mod modern age hybrid men. How would you feel then, huh? Oh, it's funny now, until you have the whole Transformer and BLT community getting my back and coming after you. <laughs> Let's see how insensitive you are then. Pfft, idiot.